Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. And now speaking of exposing, we don't only expose the left wing, of course. Even though the Liberal Hive Mind slogan claims that we are solely focused on exposing the left, we love exposing those rhinos honestly just as much, if not more, than all these wacko leftists, and that's because it's incredibly important. But sometimes when it comes to exposing, I don't even need to do anything. They do it themselves. They do the work for me. And the rhinos at Fox News are working overtime, showing the American people exactly what side they're on. The establishment neocon GOP. I've never really liked Sean Hannity. I've always found him disingenuous, and his behind-the-scenes relations and actions have exposed who he is already over the last year and a half or so. But Sean Hannity's most recent interaction with Lauren Boebert really starts to paint the full picture. It shows you exactly who Sean Hannity is, and that's Sean Neocon Hannity. Don't really need too much explanation. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so take a look at this interaction between Sean Hannity and Lauren Boebert. Kevin McCarthy has 202, three votes. Your side has 20. So if I'm going to use your words and your methodology and your math, uh, isn't it time for you to pack it in and your side to pack it in, considering he has over 200 and you have 20? Sean, I understand the frustration. I promise you, but I'm not um, frustrated. He does you didn't not answer have the my votes. question. And we are hearing, we I'm are not, hearing I'm from many frustrated. people who are still voting with Kevin McCarthy, who You're are not very my supportive question. of what we're doing, and they're cheering us on. So there are more for us than are against us. I believe that this read? is what our founding fathers intended, and okay. this is showing Yesterday that you our voted. votes are working. Our votes aren't just an, a, a cast. Congresswoman, to I'd ask you not to filibuster. Kevin mm -hmm. McCarthy didn't want to give it to you, but he did give it to you in the end. To me, that's kind of an insurance so, Sean, policy. I can I but finish? he didn't all the way. He did Wait not. A minute. Sure. He he gave you what you asked for, and one of the things that he I've been not. asked that Kevin McCarthy did not give us my hard red line. He fought and for this it. is a century old, a centuries. No, he did not. No, he, well, I know that he made the that promise. That was written by Thomas Jefferson. I know he speaker, made the promise because... 18. Now, what exactly is Sean Hannity interested in here? You know, you would think if you were being an honest member of the media, and even beyond the media, an honest conservative considering he's an open Republican advocate, you would think that he would have more of an open mind to the concerns surrounding Kevin McCarthy. But Sean Hannity seems more concerned in ramrodding Kevin McCarthy through with no questions asked. And his arguments fall very flat in this interaction. Action. His main argument seems to be, well, you don't have the votes, you only have 20 votes, therefore. But that's not a very sound argument at all. If anything, it's a counter-argument. If Kevin McCarthy can't get his majority, then he can't get his majority. And Lauren Boebert is trying to speak, but this clown keeps speaking over her, asking for who the alternative is. Well, she keeps trying to tell you, but you won't open your damn ears. Literally, anybody but Kevin McCarthy, or any of these rhino Kevin McCarthy faction clowns. Somebody who could actually unite the party and get the damn votes. It's that simple. But again, instead of having a conversation, these neocons just want to force their way. It's a bad look and it's making things worse. The more they do this, the more they lie and the more they attack, the deeper Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert, and crew are going to dig their heels in. Sean Hannity claims that Kevin McCarthy gave them everything that they wanted. I'm seeing the fake news media post the same story. It's total bogus nonsense. Kevin McCarthy isn't even willing to commit to balanced budgets. Are Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates crazy that they don't want a supposed conservative leading the House and leading legislation who won't commit to a balanced budget, especially during an inflation crisis? We're seeing Republicans, we're seeing the GOP become big, bloated government Democrats with slight different views on a couple issues. The demands of the 20 Republicans denying Kevin McCarthy's seat are not crazy. Yet what are we seeing from the establishment neocon Fox News hacks is the promotion of this idea that the 20 conservatives blocking Kevin McCarthy are somehow extremists, terrorists, insurrectionists. And I'm saying those words literally. Those are quotes. Take a look at what Brian Kilmeade said on Fox News yesterday morning. They can discuss ways to get around this and try to come together today at, at noon. Right, but here's the thing. If you pick Jim, just so insincere the insurrectionists are, we might, probably shouldn't use that word, the people that don't want to vote for Kevin McCarthy. They would disagree. Saboteur. Right. Saboteur. Saboteur. So, he, this, so if you pick... 
a little bit of a Freudian slip. Some would say that he misspoke, it was a mistake. No, it wasn't. The truth came out for once. This is what you get from the neocons at Fox. And if they're not calling those 20 Republicans insurrectionists, they're calling them terrorists. Here's a leaked recording of Rhino Dan Crenshaw. Get another scalp and another scalp, whether it's whether it's Boehner or Paul Ryan or then McCarthy, Scalise would just be next and we all know it. We just can't allow that to happen. That's why those of us are saying, like, look, you pushed us into this corner, so now we're, now we're saying we won't vote for anyone but McCarthy. That's why we're saying it, because we cannot let the terrorists win. That, that's basically what's happening. Calling the 20 holdouts terrorists. They're not negotiating in good faith. That's what they tell the media. We're negotiating in good faith. We're giving them everything that they want, and they still refuse to accept Kevin McCarthy as leader. When really what they're doing is threatening these 20 Republicans, blackmailing them with removal of their committee assignments, and calling them insurrectionists and terrorists, and pretending to be the good guys in the media. Dan Crenshaw once again paints this picture as if it's him versus the evildoers. And because of what they're doing, he won't support anybody but Kevin McCarthy. Well, that's a very interesting take as if you have any leverage whatsoever. If anything, the 20 Republican holdouts are the ones with all of the leverage. And I guess in the end here, we'll just have to see who can hold the line longer. Dan Crenshaw is claiming that he'll vote for nobody but Kevin McCarthy. Well, Matt Gates is also claiming that he will never vote for Kevin McCarthy. Make an effort for McCarthy to solicit a list and then use that list in some way to try to divide our conference. But look, he's a desperate guy whose vote share is dropping with every subsequent vote, and I'm ready to vote all night, all week, all month, and never for that person. So I tell you what, when he comes out and heads back to his squatting in the speaker's office, which why is he even allowed to be there? Like, is there some basis in law or statute or rule for someone who comes in second place in six consecutive speaker races to be able to assume the speaker's office? But when he comes out here, ask him if he apologized there to me uh, in private and ask him why in my discussion with him he was he's willing to vote all week all month but never for kevin mccarthy and so i guess we'll just have to see who's bluffing and who actually means it this is a pivotal moment the neocon rhinos are exposing themselves and finally there's a discussion there's a challenge these establishment goons are crying and melting down they have their panties in a knot because it's the first time there's been an actual challenge to their leadership claim it's healthy it's a good thing. So many people are saying it's such a mess. It's a loss for conservatives. It's really not. It's one of the biggest wins. It's one of the most pivotal moments. Republican voters want accountability. Republican voters want a true discussion and a meritocracy. They want real, organic democracy. They want honest leadership, and they want to be led by people who actually have their interests at heart, people who represent them. And this is how it works. This is how it happens. With actual, rigorous debate and challenge, not entitlement. Not a system of vote for me or else because I am supreme and all-powerful and control the purse. There's finally a healthy challenge. It may be divisive in the short term, but the goal is to lead to a united and undivided view with strong leadership that represents the whole. Not weak, capitulating establishment Republican leadership that stands for nothing, that can't even stand for balancing the damn budget. It's honestly times like this that I wish Rand Paul wasn't a senator because he would be the perfect Speaker of the House. Kevin McCarthy just isn't that guy, and the establishment is going to have to accept it at some point, and hopefully, Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert, and crew can hold the line for as long as it takes. That's what I got for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.